Hey, it's uh, everyone's favorite Canadian Red Tory trike. I hope. I mean, if there's another one out there, I'd like to meet her. Maybe we could double date. Anyway, um, that's not important. I am responding to, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Lisa Vu. Uh, her video, Butches and Nouns, and why she just raves about, um, sorry, I mean, this is supposed to be somewhat more direct, why you wonder why people might have a problem with Nora Vincent's uh, book, Self Made Man. Um, for me, it's a piece she wrote in The Advocate on June 20th, 2000, and this is not the only time she said this, but I'll just, I'll, I'll read verbatim what we have. Uh, title of the article is Cunning Linguists. Here we go. Nowadays it's fashionable to pretend that sex and gender mean the same thing. They don't, it's just that the language has been hijacked by politics. Naturally, many transsexuals, the most draconian arm of the PC language police, are fond of misusing the word gender, mostly because, unlike the word sex, there's no biological imperative attached to it. This is where the postmodernists are right. Gender in humans is socially constructed and therefore therefore fungible. Quaffed wigs and makeup are feminine now, but our oh-so-butch founding fathers wore them once. Sex, however, much to every transsexual chagrin, is not socially constructed. It can be cosmetically constructed or reconstructed, but this doesn't change the fact that though some people were, are born hermaphrodites, I'm not intersex as far as I know, but I'm sure someone will have issues with that anyway, uh, doesn't change the fact that though some people are born hermaphrodites, the vast majority of people are born male or female. Regardless, society has no say in the matter except in neonatal surgery. For purposes of procreation, there are two sexes. Anything else is a genetic slash biochemical anomaly that we correct to save kids' humiliation in the locker room. Transsexual activists are always telling us that it's a crime to surgically reassign hermaphrodites at birth. I agree. If I'm born doubly blessed in the South 40, then the doctor should let me be, even if I get teased until I'm old enough to decide my own fate. So why as adults do transsexuals mutilate their bodies in order to make them conform to the fashionable version of the opposite sex and gender? That only reinforces oppressive stereotypes every bit as much as liposuction or a bimbo's boob, jo boob job. If you're a man in a woman's body, then live androgynously if you're such a revolutionary. Don't conform. I do it every day, and it isn't particularly easy. Half the time I'm sir, and half the time I'm ma'am, and that's how it should be when sex and gender don't matter. If you want to truly thwart gender norms, don't pull a fast one on the dictionary or your poor blameless privates. Live with all the polymorphy God gave you, body and soul. It's a lot more radical. Yeah, so it's the same tired subversivist argument that uh, any access to transition medicine, despite the fact that, um, to reference another video, for eons, trans people have fought for recognition and the means of access to uh, transition medicine, even if it was something simple, uh, as simple as putting, you know, a quarter ounce of hops in your daily salad. Um, yeah, it, it's a really tired argument that works really well for uh, cissexual individuals who are comfortable with their body, though they may rankle at the gender presentation uh, restrictions. And I think a lot of people rankle at gender presentation restrictions. Uh, I don't know of, of anyone who has ever thought of having their hair dyed an unnatural color who hasn't felt objectified in a service industry job. Anyway, I begin to ramble now. That's the problem a lot of people have with Nora Vincent. The, the problem is that, quite frankly, um, she is conflating, um, she is conflating dysphoria with, you know, discomfort and chafing with restrictive gender roles, which, I don't know, um, it's, I, I have no answer to that other than it's someone who socially transitioned, found it not particularly comforting, um, and decided therefore that no one is trans, that everyone is a radical. Oh, and of course there's the, you know, if you're, if you're in any way um, trans feminine, that means you must be typically feminine. It's like I saw on a post on the Mishfest forum my friend directed me to, 
um, someone someone in in trying to discourage um, one of the poster's boyfriends from transitioning said, "I grew up in a small town and I liked sports, girls, and video games, and therefore I thought I must be a boy." That was actually the rationalization I went with for a long, long time. There's there's a difference between. Um, having a problem with how your body presents and wanting in some way to be radical. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it was a conscious political choice, but I tend to think that when people like me and mine are attacked simply for existing, that we are very unintentionally um, committing a radical act. I had to fight bureaucrats for about five months to get blood pressure medicine, uh, spironolactone. Oh, and my blood pressure was at the time 155 over 95. I haven't checked it recently, but that's because I like pepperoni too much and I'm kind of afraid of what number it will give me. Anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's a really tiresome argument. Um, and I'm sure that's not what comes across as, as much in the book. Um, a lot of it talks about the difference between being considered, you know, being a, a uh, considered a masculine woman, being considered butch, and being a man. And there's, there is a world of difference between butch presentation and male presentation. No argument here. Um, the argument is that I don't know. The mutilation meme really strikes me as odd. I mean, I'm non-operative. It's for my reasons. Um, you know, I was concerned about all sorts of um, possible side effects, and there are. There are with any surgery. There's always a risk of complications. Um, for some people, they they will hurt themselves if they don't get surgery. For some people, they still want to die. Um, as one blogger I've read said, it became an unwelcome visitor. Um, and yes, when a part of your body feels that alien to you, and it's giving you that much stress, uh, stress on a daily basis, probably not a bad idea to deal with it. Um, and at the same time, I mean, we have to get over this this conception that genitalia are gender. They're not. Um, for that matter, I mean, if you look at the at the uh, BSTC. I can't remember exactly what that stands for. Center of the brainstem in which um, gender identity tends to be determined. That I think is an awful lot more integral to gender identity than um, the gonadal arrangement. So, yeah, I, I know I've gotten off on this big trans 101 tangent when I really just wanted to say the reason some people might have a problem with self-made men is that Nora Vincent is one of those classic subversivist transphobes, you know. The, the same old line we've been hearing since Germaine Greer and Mary Daly and Gloria Steinem at all, you know, why can't you just be a feminine man? It's like, well, because I'm not. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs>